here's the episode on Acid Rain. Of course, the song that went through my head was... Purple Rain, Purple Rain. Yep, Acid Rain, Acid Rain. Not purple, but acid. All right, so here we've got here the issue that we've brought up in previous videos that it's it's um it's made by the fact that we have all these pollutant gases and so pure water right but what happens is carbon dioxide dissolves into water um it's not very well okay but it does dissolve and it dissolves for example in your plasma in our body etc but carbon dioxide does dissolve into water and so if you get a straw and, and a cup and you put an indicator in there let's say an indicator at home you could use would be um, red cabbage juice and you blow into that the cabbage juice will change color if you're in the lab of course you can use universal indicator and uh, it should start off with green with universal indicator you blow into that water with a straw it'll start to decrease and go down to being more orangey red so carbon dioxide does dissolve in water to make our acid carbonic acid okay and so therefore acid rain is when you have a pH of around about 6 to 6.5 okay well actually correction when we below the CO2 we have that acid rain is, is around about 5 so I guess you could say acid rain water is about 4 to 5 okay so that's carbon dioxide, but we can also find our other gases, sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide, will do the same thing. They will dissolve in water and they will make um, sulfuric acid and um, nitric acid as well. So all three of these non-metallic oxides will dissolve into the water and cause acid rain. Okay, so let's look at, I'll just rub this off to get a bit more space. All right, so sulfur dioxide will dissolve in water to make our two acids, sulfurous acid and sulfuric acid. So if we have SO2 that dissolves in water, that'll make sulfurous acid. But then that sulfurous acid can be oxidized. Sulfuric acid. So that sulfuric acid, we know and learn to love that in the lab, this can be made just by getting CO2 and, and getting it through some water there. Um, we can also do the same if we were to talk about SO3, sul tri I'm sorry, sulfur trioxide. And sulfur trioxide reacts with water to make sulfuric acid straight away. Okay, so both of our sulfur gases will result in the production of sulfuric acid and acid rain okay now a really cool thing you can do which I might even do in the lab and uh, record it and um, add it to this video is you can light some matches and see in this head of a match you've got some sulfur but you've also got some phosphorus and phosphorus will react to produce phosphoric acid but if you get some of that and you uh, light a, a fair amount of that the gases um, will dissolve into the water and then you can test the water and the, and the pH of the water will go down. So that's one little demonstration you can do in the lab to show that sulfur di gases, di dioxide and trioxide, as well as some um, phosphate gases, right? Dihydrogen, um, uh, sorry, um, diphosphorus pentoxide, I think it is, or tetroxide, um, will react with the water to make our acid rain. Right, let's check out the next section which we're going to look at at how actually our nitrogen works. All right, so here we have our nitrogen dioxide, our brown poisonous gas. If that reacts with water, it will make nitrous, whoops, sorry, that's nitric acid. I like to write, like to write nitrous first and then nitric. So it'll produce both of these acids, okay. If we also think of that one there, that can also just react with oxygen and that produces nitric acid as well. Okay, and we would do a two there and a two there. So we can see that all the gases we've been talking about, carbon dioxide gas makes carbonic acid, sulfur dioxide, sulfur trioxide make our sulfuric acid, and then our nitrogen dioxide will end up making eventually our nitric acid. 
All these contribute to acid rain because all these gases are in the atmosphere and they will dissolve in the rainwater as it comes through, causing the pH to go between 4 and 5, which is acidic and that will react with a variety of things. Now, here is a little demonstration that I'm going to show a picture in a second. I'm going to rub this off. They're going to put up a demonstration thing that's usually done in the lab. And that shows you the effects of acid rain on a variety of things because acid rain affects biological systems in terms of um, directly at skin, etc. But plants, it affects the soils and plants and affects plants from growing and stopping from germination. It affects waterways and lakes by decreasing the pH and so it changes the pH of water and we're going to have that in the demonstration. It affects metals so it can cause corrosion of metals and we're going to have a little metal in our demonstration as well. Um, and so I'm going to rub this out, show you the picture and we're going to draw it up as a great way of showing you how acid rain affects all those aspects. All right, so this is what a little demonstration you can do. Just lost the, there we go. Is you have a Petri dish, right? This is a square Petri dish. I've just drawn a square, right? But normally you have a Petri dish. Um, I just drew a square. And in the Petri dish, you'll have a dish in the middle as well. And in that, you're gonna add two chemicals, right? You're gonna add some sodium sulfite But not, not right at the beginning. You're first going to add some sodium sulfate. Now around the rest of the Petri dish, you're going to have a variety of materials to model different aspects of the environment and organic matter. So you're going to have a pedal. So let's just draw a pedal in here. All right, there's my pedal from a plant. So that re rep represents some plants and the effects on plants. Then we're going to have some, a, a pile of powder. So you're going to have some calcium carbonate. And that calcium carbonate is like marble. So there's our structures of statues and, and some bridges, very old bridges, and of course the facades of uh, sandstone, etc. Because a lot of um, sandstone bricks are held together by calcium carbonate within the mortar. And then you're going to have some more plant material. You're going to have some apple flesh and some apple skin. All right, so how about we just go app flesh and app skin. Okay, then over here you're going to have some universal indicator, right? Because that's going to be a visual um, clue on how the how the pH is changing, and then you're going to have some bromothymol blue, so another indicator, bromothymol, right? Blue, you're going to have a strip of magnesium. And of course, before you do this, you're going to add some water because remember that these gases in the atmosphere need to react with water that, so that we have an aqueous acid that does the damage. So you're going to add some drops of water on the pedal, some drops of water on the calcium carbonate. Some, and these have already got water on them, but you can't, won't hurt. Add a bit more water on those. Of course, universal indicator, it's got water in it. Same with bromothymol. Now the magnesium, you probably won't add water to it because magnesium reacts with acid. So we'll leave the magnesium by itself. Then what you do is you put your sulfuric acid, give it a little mix, and that reaction is going to make sulfur dioxide and quickly close the top of the Petri dish. You can even get some paraffin um, film to wrap around the outside because remember, sulfur dioxide is um, uh, antagonist for asthma, so you want to make sure that this is done in a fume hood. Um, if you have asthma, of course, you just watch from a distance. From a distance. <sighs> and anyway, so this is what happens. And so this sodium sulfate and sulfuric acid will make um, sulfur dioxide. So sodium, sodium sulfite, I should say, plus sulfuric acid makes sodium sulfate plus sulfur dioxide and water. And it's that sulfur dioxide gas that's produced inside this Petri dish that causes these uh, effects. So what I'm going to do is going to show you a picture now of a before, what the experimental setup looks like before, and then I'm going to show you one that's after. And as you can see with the after, that the plant petal here is significantly affected. It's, it's white, um, 
The magnesium doesn't look like it's happening much, but if you look with a microscope, you'll start to see that it is reacting. Um, the calcium carbonate is, is affected by the sulfur dioxide because you would expect carbonate plus acid. It should evolve carbon dioxide gas as it decomposes. We should, an interesting thing here is that uh, the, the apple flesh and the apple skin, you don't see much change in those. And then you see the universal indicator changes color, the same with the bromothymol. Oh, excuse me. It's getting late here when I'm filming this, but I do apologize. So we've got those changing color, which is acid, which is what we're expecting. Now, how can we explain these two things here? Well, the thing is, is that if you look at the apple when you first cut it, and you do this experiment, you usually let this on the bench for an hour, two hours, three hours, or the next day. If you look at the apple, the, the apple from which these pieces came were actually brown because the, the uh, enzymes in the apple are being, um, I guess, used to decompose the flesh. But sulfur is a good preservant as well, a preservative. And that sulfur stops those enzymes from um, you know, causing the browning effect. So it's really quite interesting that this here, this flesh stuff here, is affecting, um, the, or decreasing the decomposition of that, that flesh. But if you mix it with water and make acid, that's not a good thing. So we can see that acid rain there has a big impact on a lot of different things. So let's take that first-hand data and draw a little mind map to explain how it affects the different features of an ecosystem. All right, let's rub it off. Okay, it's not really a mind map. I'm just going to list it out here. So we've got a calcium carbonate, which is to simulate the marble, okay, in statues, etc. So we can say that statues, um, other structures that are made from buildings, etc., they start to um, be decomposed, right? They're broken apart, right, by acid rain. And of course, we know that we have calcium carbonate. Oh, that's not great. Let me add some acid. Oh, there we go. And so we've got a carbonate and an acid, so we're going to break that down. So we've got calcium sulfate, CO2 plus water. Okay, so we've got that. Number two, there we go. Um, we've got metallic structures. So I guess you could see bridges, um, you know, um, fences, um, you know, you have light poles that are made of acids, um, etc. So those structures get attacked by acid. And so if we say that iron, iron is a main component of steel, okay, plus acid, iron sulfate, and gas. Okay, so we've got the breaking down of metallic structures. Then we have biological effects. Um, biological effects, if we turn it in terms of plants, and you probably can't see this, so I might have to write it up here. But the plants, the waxy coating on their cuticles starts to get eaten away on the leaves. Okay, and of course that means that they start to decrease in their photosynthetic ability. All right, so we're going to decrease in photosynthesis. If you're changing the pH of the soil, then that's going to affect the ability of plants to absorb minerals that they used to grow and they used to reproduce and they used to um, photosynthesize. So decreasing the quality of the soil due to the lack of minerals, right? or mineral uptake, I should say. Okay, so therefore, if we're talking about agricultural crops in terms of food production, we get a reduction in the yield of agricultural crops or the death of the agricultural crop. Okay, all right, so let's... Let's rub this off, pause it, rub it off, and uh, we can add another one. Okay, the last one we're going to be looking at is pH of lakes. So pH of water gets changed. So the decrease in the pH of water has an impact on aquatic life. How does it impact aquatic life, I hear you ask? Well, I'm about to tell you. First thing, it uh, kills eggs. Eggs of many fish species do not like acidic conditions and so if you're decreasing the number of eggs you're of course decreasing the reproductive capacity of a population of fish 
And so you are changing, um, you know, the food web, if you will. You also find that you're going to affect the oxygen uptake ability of fish because just like any other enzyme, um, the enzymes in fish that try to, um, in, the in the hemoglobin, start to denature and they cannot absorb the oxygen in the water and so therefore they suffocate, right? So um, fish start to die as a result of not getting oxygen and usually you see them floating on the top of the water um, and therefore a decrease in fish population, right? Fish numbers, once again, affecting the food chain. If you don't have, you know, lower order fish, um, because they're dying because of oxygen availability, then of course the larger fish or other organisms that rely on to eat those fish don't have a food source. So we have that ripple effect. So the fragility of food webs is affected by acid rain. Um, if you're talking about um, organisms that make shells, so if you're talking about in a, you know, in um, oceans, then the invertebrates that make their calcium um, shells, calcium carbonate shells, can't make strong enough shells because, of course, the pH of the water changes and, of course, that reacts with their shell. They can't make thick shells, therefore they get, more, they get um, eaten a lot easier by their predators, etc. And so we have, um, you know, decalcification issues of those um, invertebrates. Right, so we can see that acid rain has a lot of impacts on biological systems. Um, it has a lot of impacts on human health uh, in terms of affecting food webs, um, food availability, etc. Um, and it imp impacts structures such as statues, etc. So hopefully that makes sense. Acid rain, very important. Um, you know, we've got to try and do something about it. We are the caretakers of our land and we need to make sure it's there for the future. Anyway, that's acid rain in relation to the non-metallic oxides. See you in the next video.